Hey guys and welcome back to another Unreal Engine 4 tutorial. In today's video I'm going to be showing you how to create a horde system or a wave system. So essentially a load of enemies will spawn in in waves. When you kill them the next wave will spawn in. You kill those the next wave will spawn in and each wave will increase in the amount of enemies spawned each time as well. So let me hit play, get in and show you what we're going to make today. So you see we start off with this one enemy. I kill it and then I have three spawners placed in which will all spawn two enemies in each. If I kill these then even more will spawn in in these three spawners and it will exponentially increase each time and obviously for me it's quite easy to kill them I just walk into them but that's not the purpose of today's video today is just creating a system in which more and more enemies will keep on spawning in as you see here. So without further ado this is what we make today so let me delete this code and I'll show you how we're going to do it. So the first thing we want to do is we want to create it so we can see how many enemies we have left so if we've killed them all we can then spawn in the next bunch. So very simply, I'm going to be doing this in the game mode blueprint. So for me that's going to be content, third person BP, blueprints, third person game mode. You just do it in your own game mode for whichever one that you have. And in here we're going to do some very very simple code. Because all we need to do is add in a custom event, an integer and an event dispatcher. So I'm going to do that now. So I'm going to right click, add custom event. I'm going to name this one check enemy left. Because as it sounds, this is going to check to see how many enemies we have left in the level or in this certain wave. So to do that, we need to check, which is a branch. So we're going to hold down B and left click to get a branch, connecting that in there. And the condition is going to be enemies alive is equal to zero. So we can add a variable here. So we hit the plus variable, naming this enemy alive or enemies alive or enemies left, anything which makes sense for you. And we're going to change it from a boolean to an integer. Drag and drop that in there, get enemies alive, and simply out of that, get an equal equal integer, leaving it at zero with a condition going in there. Because if enemies alive is not equal to zero, then there's still some left, and if enemies alive is equal to zero, then we've killed them all, and we can go on to the next bit of code. And the next bit of code is going to be spawning them in again. But I'm not spawning them in the game mode blueprint, I'm going to create that own blueprint for that, so we need to create an event dispatcher to easily communicate between this blueprint and that blueprint. So I'm going to do that now. So I'm going to hit the plus event dispatches down here and I'm going to name this one respawn enemy. As that makes sense for me or you can have it as spawn next wave or spawn enemies anything which you want. But I think for me respawn enemy makes sense and I'm going to drag and drop that and hit call setting that off of true. So very simply it's a custom event of check enemies left into a branch of if the enemies alive is equal to zero and if it is, we're going to call this event dispatcher of respawning enemies, which we'll finish setting up later on. And again, this is all we need to do in the game mode blueprint. Very, very simple. So we can compile, save, and close that like so. And next, I'm going to set up the enemy blueprint. So as you can see, I have this very simple enemy here. All I've done is duplicated the character blueprint and made the mesh red instead of that kind of off-white color. And again, this is in my enemy folder here. I've just duplicated it, named it enemy AI open it up and I have this basic code here so all I've got is event begin play and then some code to make it chase the character which I'll go over in a second as well and to kill the AI all I've got is event hit if it's the character we're going to destroy the actor. So let me go over what we need to do. So in this blueprint what we need to do is update the game mode blueprint because we just created a variable in there of enemies alive so when we spawn in an enemy i.e. event begin play of the enemy AI BP, we need to update that value of plus one. So very simply, event begin play, we can cast to the third person game mode blueprint, or whatever it is for you, just your game mode blueprint, which again for me is cast to third person game mode. Object will always be get game mode. And as third person game mode, what we need to do is get enemies alive. So we get the variable first. And out of that, we're gonna get an increment. So we're then going to increase this by one. Connecting that up to there like so. So very simply, when this enemy is spawned in, what it's gonna do is it's gonna get the current amount of alive enemies and increase that by one so it knows that there is one extra enemy in the level. And also what we need to do is if we select enemy AI self up on the top left, what we need to do is make sure that auto possess AI is placed in world or spawned. So by default it is placed in world 
it needs to be placed in world or spawned so that when we spawn in the enemy which we're going to do later on it will be auto possessed so it will be moving around it'll be controlled all that good stuff which we need so just make sure you have auto possessed ai as placed in world or spawned there like so and then the other code i'm going to do off event we can play is casting to my character and then setting that to be the target actor of an ai move too so what this is going to do here is just make it so when the enemy spawns in it's going to just run directly at the player always you don't have to do that if you don't want you can have it instead to random roams and if it sees the player it chases them if you wanted that but typically in games like this it's just they're just running at the enemy or you can have it so they're running at a goal post or something which the player needs to defend obviously set this up to be whatever you want but in my example they're going to be running directly towards the player now let's also set up killing the ai so again in my basic example it's just the, the character walking into the enemy but you can set this up to whatever you want essentially this here is me killing the enemy event hit cast a third person character so however you're going to kill the enemy what you also need to do is what i'm about to do here after you've killed them you need to cast to your game mode again which for me is the third person game mode like so object once again being get game mode and so at the start what we did was we added one to the enemy's life now we need to subtract one because we've killed them there's one less enemy alive so very simply as third person game mode we can again get enemy alive like so and now instead of getting an increment integer we're going to get a decrement or decrement integer which instead of adding one it's just going to take one away very simply like so and also we need to call the custom event we made of checking how many enemies we have left so if we kill one we need to see how many we have left now so as third person game mode we're going to also call function check enemy left like so to see how many we have left in the level and then after that we've got destroy actor because we killed the enemy we're going to destroy the actor as well and always make sure destroy actor is at the end of the code because anything after destroy actor will not fire off because obviously you've destroyed the actor there's no code left it's been deleted so have that at the end of your code and that is all I'm going to do for the enemy blueprint. What we've got is when the enemy spawned in, it's going to add one to the variable of enemies alive, and then just make sure they're chasing the player. And when the enemy dies, i.e. when the player hits them, what it's going to do is take one away from the enemies alive, and then also check to see how many enemies are left, just in case this was the last one in the level. So we can compile, save, and we can close this as well, as this is all we need to do in the enemy BP here. And finally, last but not least, what we need to do is also set up a blueprint to spawn in these enemies. So that's also very simple. What we're going to do is right click, go to blueprint class, get an actor, and I'm going to name this one enemy spawner BP. You can name this whatever you like, but that makes sense to me. We're going to open that up straight away. I'm not going to add anything in the viewport because I don't need to see this. It doesn't need to be visual. All this needs to be is somewhere where we can spawn in the enemies. You can add something in here if you wanted, so you could maybe have it as like a kind of house type thing, or just put an arrow there so you can see it. Anything like that, you can add it in, but I'm not going to bother, and I'm just going to go straight over to the event graph here, and I'm going to delete begin overlap and event tick. But on event begin play, what we want to do is we want to make sure that we are using the event dispatcher we made previously in the game mode blueprint, because that event dispatcher is going to be called when there's no enemies left, so when we want to respawn the enemies which is why we're doing it in the enemy spawner. So event begin play, we're going to cast to the blueprint that event dispatcher was in. Like I said, it was in the game mode blueprint. So for me, that's going to be cast to third person game mode. Just cast to whatever blueprint you have it in. So this might be in the enemy BP or anything along those lines. And object is going to again be obviously get game mode if it is the game mode blueprint. As third person game mode, what we're going to do is bind event to and then whatever you named your event dispatcher. So I named it respawn enemy. Obviously put this as whatever you have it named for you. It will always start with bind event two and then the name of your event dispatcher. In my case, respawn enemy. And you can see we have this event here because we need to bind an event to this event dispatcher. So what I'm gonna do is drag out the event there and add a custom event. And I'm gonna name this one spawn enemy as that's what this event is gonna do. So that makes sense for me. Just another quick overview of what this event dispatcher is doing. When we call that event dispatcher in the game mode blueprint, i.e. when there's no enemies left, it's going to call it 
And because we've binded this event now to it, so we've binded the spawn enemy event to that event dispatcher, when the event dispatcher fires off, we're also going to fire off this custom event here. I hope that makes sense and I do have another video going over the event dispatcher a little bit more as well. So I'll leave a link to that in the description down below if you want to learn a little bit more about that. But essentially, when the event dispatcher fires off, this event will also fire off. So it's just a nice way to communicate between blueprints. And when we do fire off this event, we want to spawn in the enemy. And we don't want to just spawn in one, we want to spawn in multiple and have it increasing with each wave. So out of this event, I'm going to get a four loop, like so, just a normal four loop. First index is zero, last index is going to be how many enemies we want to spawn in. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add another variable here, so hit the plus variable, and I'm going to name this one enemy spawned, or enemy spawned, or anything along those lines. And this is going to be an integer, get that, compile it, and you can obviously set this to a default value if you want. So the first amount of enemies that are going to spawn, I'll set that to two. We're going to put that in there, get enemy spawned, and then out of this we need to get an integer minus an integer minus one and connect that into the last index. The reason I've got the minus one is because if enemy spawned is two, the index will be two, which is zero, one, two. That's three different values. So if, when this value is two, it's going to spawn in three. So if we just take off one, it will be two perfectly. So that way we know whatever this value is, is how many enemies are going to be spawned in. So I hope that makes sense. Again, essentially, enemy spawned, minus one, in the last index of the for loop, like so. And then the loop body is how we want to spawn in the enemy. So very simply, all we can do is just get a spawn actor from class, with the class being the enemy AI we made earlier. So what it's going to do is for however many enemies we want to spawn, it's going to spawn them in. And the spawn transform, I'm just going to do it where this blueprint is. So that's going to be get actor transform for me like so. That should work perfectly for what we want to do. So what it's going to do is just spawn in the enemy where this blueprint is. And when we finish spawning in the enemy, so we've completed, we want to make sure that next time we spawn in more enemies. So what I'm going to do is create another variable, naming this enemy increment or spawn increment, anything along those lines. And I'm going to get that, so get enemy increment. Out of this, I'm then going to get an increment int. So it's going to add one to that value like so. And that will make more sense in a second, because after this, we're going to set enemy spawned, the variable we already have, which is connected up here. And setting that, what we're going to do is get enemy spawned plus an integer, and we're going to add the enemy increment to it, connecting that into the enemy spawned. So what's going to happen is every time we spawn in the enemies, the amount of enemies we spawn in next time will increase exponentially. So essentially, the enemy spawned plus the enemy increment will be the next enemy spawned. So I'm also going to compile and set a default value for the increment, and I'm going to have it as 1 by default. So by default, enemy spawned is 2, and the enemy increment is 1. So the first time this is fired off, it's going to spawn in 2 enemies. Then it'll increase the increment by 1, setting that to 2, and we have two enemies plus the two increments, that'll be four. So the next time it's fired off, it will spawn in four enemies. Then we do this again, that'll increase by one, so it'll be four plus three. So the next time it spawns in, it will spawn in seven. And it will go on, so on and so forth, exponentially increasing each time. So I hope that makes sense for you. And you can obviously not increase this by one, you can increase it by one, two, three. You can do anything you want with this. This is just the example I'm creating, but again, customize this to get it perfect for you. And with a compile and save of that, that is the code all done. So it might be a bit more simple than you're expecting it to be. Essentially, we're just gonna kill the enemies. Once we've killed them, we're gonna spawn in more enemies, exponentially increasing it by just adding a few integer values together. So we can minimize this and then get this working. So what I'm gonna do is have an enemy AI spawned in here automatically. You can have one, two, three, however many you want, but just make sure you do have at least one in the world already and then just drag in the spawners where you want them. So I want three spawners here, and there may be a fourth one down here as well. So if I hit play, you can see we have this enemy here running around. If I walk into it to kill it, you can see the other four spawners have now fired off like so. And they all spawned in two, and then when it goes off again, they're gonna spawn in four, and they should spawn in seven next time. Let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, as you can see there. However, I have noticed that only three spawners are spawning, not a fourth one as well, 
just slightly strange let's delete that one and see what happens now those three are spawning so I put another one in here maybe let's see what happens only those three are spawning so that's a bit strange so we hit play again test it out now we've now got those three spawning in like so and one thing I'm also going to change which might also help fix this issue is on the spawn actor enemy AI here we can change the collision handling override from default to always spawn ignore collisions because if you get so many what might happen is they won't all spawn in because there's too many in one place however if we always spawn them they will eventually spread out when they start moving which will work perfectly so let's also test this out once again and as they keep increasing they should keep on spawning as you see all four spawning in now so that did resolve that issue so i think that'll be it for this video as we've done everything we want to do we've set it up so what we've got is an enemy wave or horde system so when we kill all the enemies in the level the next wave will spawn in with the amount increasing exponentially each time as you can see here and you can obviously change these values to get them perfect for you so they're not all this easy to kill or anything along those lines and i think the reason they're bouncing up in the air there is just because of how the positioning i've got them in they're kind of in the floor a little bit so if i were to raise that up they're not all going to fire off in the air like so well that one did that is very strange so we again it's just got to be messing about with the collision so try to adjust location but always spawn let's have a look at that one and as you can see that's a lot better so again it's just messing about with the collision to get it working a lot better and perfectly for you but again this does work perfectly you just might need a few tweaks here and there to get it working better for you and how you want it to be and obviously if you want some help with those specific details of tweaking it customizing it for you let me know in the comments down below but thanks so much for watching i hope you enjoyed and i hope you found it helpful and if you did make sure to like and subscribe down below so thanks so much for watching and i'll see you in the next one